Hey everyone, it's Rye bringing you another post game recap. I think we're gonna call these banger reports. Okay. Um, I wanted to take this one specifically because I feel like a lot of people don't think about playing Liberty on the coast anymore, especially after the changes. Um, now, I will say this is a weird game. There's eight players, so of course it's going to be a little strange. And I'm also the solo person on the coast. Um, the reason I was interested in playing Norway in this spot is because of the additional faith you get um, from working luxury tiles. I mean, um, uh, see, resource tiles. And because there's eight players, you get more luxuries um, or you more luxuries of your regional spawn. So... I knew that I'd have a lot of faith generally, so I didn't really have to worry about, you know, how I'm going to get a religion and whatnot. But this game, I had an excessive amount of faith. In fact, I enhanced my religion before anyone else found it, allowing me to get really, really good, um, you know, beliefs and whatnot. But that th I want to just describe the methodology here that I had and what I ended up doing. Um, if you watch this game, if you haven't, first of all, I'd recommend watching it because it is pretty informative in terms of how to scale a coastal game and why it can be so threatening uh, to late game and you know to go even a little bit further than that um, I wanted to kind of set the stage on what I was thinking when I was playing this so in general um, nor well, like, when I play coast I, I like to think about Liberty as an option but again it's not it's not as big of an option anymore I knew as soon as I was scouting, I knew that I wanted to settle a, a lot of cities. And I knew that I wanted to do coastal. When I saw this kind of peninsula on the bottom right down here, um, you know, maybe there's a better, better view. Yeah, so there's like one right here, potentially one right here on this hardwood. I don't see what's up here yet. This, it turns out to be a city state. So this all becomes one city, but... One here, if I go on hardwood, then I can also go on the city, and then I can also go on gems. Um, then I can put one down here, and this can work my coral tile, also gets perfume, and then one on the bottom. So one, two, three, four, five, six is what I'm thinking right away. Potentially seven, I don't know yet. Um, and then if there are any islands, I could settle those two, right? So this is like my thought process and why I clicked Liberty in the first place. Um, when you see these large peninsula, usually it means you're really isolated. So that's kind of what uh, I was thinking. Um, so let's keep going. I actually do an interesting build here. This game ended up getting a little funky because someone left. But you'll notice that I actually did something pretty abnormal. And I overflowed my settlers into a... Um, stoneworks in my capital. I believe it was right after this. Yeah. And the reason for this is because I'm working one, two, three, four stone tiles, um, an obsidian and three stone. So that's five hammers and a happy. At the time, I'm pretty low on happiness, so the happiness is actually pretty relevant. But the five hammers are really what I'm looking for. So that obviously is going to slow down my settles, but it's going to guarantee that all of them are two turns. And then that's also going to just make it so that after I'm done settling, I have a lot of good tiles to be working right away. And you'll notice that this is actually pretty important because I prioritize a lot of wonders because I'm so low coast. I don't want an inland player to just come and try to snipe them. Um, but uh, yeah. I was also, and this is an important point distinction, Tromso was actually supposed to be on wheat initially. I was thinking on wheat is a good, it's a really good city because it is able to work these coral tiles. In hindsight, I'm glad I didn't put it there, but that is a very good city and I was considering it very heavily. Um, didn't end up settling at this time, but I, I'm not so averse from settling on resources that are generally seen as you know good. Um, just for the sake of like keeping that resource intact. If the city itself is a lot faster, it's you know comparably strong. I, I'll I'll kill the kill the cow or I'll kill the horse or whatever it is. Um, so we have this. Obviously, the the on hardwood didn't pan out because of Singapore, and that's fine. 
And one thing I want to make very clear here is when I'm playing Coast, I am not in a rush, right? I, I, I'm fine overflowing this um, Stoneworks because I can just keep pushing out Settlers. The most important thing for me is making sure, one, that my gold per turn does not get too out of control bad, and two, that I am able to send cargoes to the cities that need them and the ones that come on late. So we'll see here, I do what you're actually not supposed to do, and um, and I settle islands, and I went scouting, you'll see I found this island, which is so droll, um, and I just threw some in the water, but you're not, I, I would not recommend doing this, this was kind of a meme type game, which is why I was kind of playing a little carelessly, but in general, um, you know, on if you're ever going to do this, on, on coast is the only time you don't get really punished. I'm playing Liberty here. My game's already going to be slow. I'm not in a rush. I know I'm going to be fine. At this point, I'm building scouts to help me scout um, islands, and I'm also needing to build another scout for Singapore. Remember, a scout is cheaper than a worker, so if I turn this scout into a worker, it was a positive, uh, positive trade. Think about it like that. You'll see that I'm queuing library lighthouses pretty much first in every single one of my cities. This is because Starlight is gonna what is gonna be able to um, bridge the happiness gap. Uh, if in cities where I might not have grown to certain tiles, right? I, I'm not. I can't afford to buy this coral, right? I it, I just can't. Um, and you know, building that lighthouse will actually help me grow there faster. Um, and it'll obviously, when I grow there, it'll already be an incredibly strong tile. Um, so one thing you always need to worry about is your gold per turn issues. Coral is an amazing lux uh, on Liberty because it has such high gold. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of good options. So I get pretty lucky with the island directly to my, uh, to my right. Um, the story of this game, frankly, is just a lot of duplicate luxes. I do communicate with the person to my left. He's not settling the city to the left. It's not a great city by any means. It'll, it, it will need a hammer cargo later on in the game, but it does have Behringer Crater, and it does have luxury, uh, a unique Lux and my regional, so it's worth settling. Um, Coastal does an amazing job of turning pretty dog shit cities into useful ones uh, just with cargoes, so I'm not really hesitant to settle that. Keep in mind at this point, I haven't um, built a granary yet. All I have is my uh, my stoneworks, my cab. I got the five pop. And I'm heading straight for Colossus. I'm mostly going to be covering the early game here. I don't want you guys to get like the wrong idea. Because um, I think the early game here is, is pretty well, well done. Um, I, it was kind of a meme, but I still think... I, I settled it in a funny way, but it obviously worked. And I'll show the, uh, the aftermath afterwards. Um, I actually, you know, really prioritize wonders uh, on the coast, especially on Liberty, because if you go, if you play Liberty right, you're, you don't need any more wonders after the first set, but I really value like getting a Colossus. And additionally, I ended up building Great Lighthouse here because right after Settlers, I'm going to be, you know, cargoing my cap and my my cap has a lot of great tiles to work and i wanted to contest great lighthouse um i think it's just a i was worried about someone inland taking it like i mentioned before but um yeah and because i built the stoneworks earlier i am able to you know six turn it um which is really good you'll see i'm stagnating a lot of my cities and that's just you know for obvious reasons where i'm having you know problems uh, generating any gold and I and one thing I like to leverage is I like to try to go max GPT for a little bit get some trades where I trade like one one deep one GPT for 20 gold or two GPT for 40 gold or something like that um, and then I'll work the tiles I'm going so I'll be negative science but that's not what's important to me the more, most important thing is buying those Lux tiles so I can keep growing um, so remember, like I'm building this lighthouse. I still don't have a granary. End up building the lighthouse. <laughs> I can't believe I settled the city. I ended up building Colossus right afterwards. Still didn't build a granary. Um, 
I think I ended up building the granary now. I actually no, it's in Oslo. I still am not building a granary. Now I'm building my granary. Um, but my settles ended up coming down pretty good. And even in, and the only, by the way, the only reason I even settled this last city on the bottom left corner of the map, um, was because one, I had already built the settler, but two, because I'm Norway and I knew I'd eventually get this, um, I'd, re I'd eventually get a shrine and a temple up. I knew that the city would actually become really, really strong, right? Three, it's fresh water, three horse tiles, triple lux, lots of fish, um, you know, lots of tundra, which for Norway is, is pretty relevant, right? So I knew eventually it would come online. I just needed to bump, I needed to get to, um, I needed to get to, compass as soon as possible so I could start sending trade routes that would reach one thing I also wanted to mention is I'm building my roads a lot of I see a lot of people not do this because they just wait dude you're not going to be able to make any money unless you build your roads so you need to build roads on Liberty Coast it's the only way you won't fall really behind in science and GPT and then similarly I knew that this game would be really strong at least from a growth perspective I had 10 cities and I knew I'd be going explo if I'm going 10 cities, I need the happiness. So you'll see, I, I have built Colosseums in almost all of my cities already. It's turned 60. I'm going straight to Notre Dame. Um, and that's what I end up doing. I probably snipe it from someone. And you might be wondering, oh, well, what about uni timing? Like, you're going to be late to unis. Well, that's only super relevant if there's another coastal player that you're worried about. Um, remember, I'm not... I'm solo coast here, so I don't have to worry about anyone frigating me. And an inland player wouldn't be able to because I'd have too many hammers. Um, and I could just pump Galeas or something like that. Additionally, I'm at 82 science without building, like, a single library. Like, that's pretty insane. My pop is crazy at this point. Um, and I already opened Explo because of um, finishing Liberty, getting my Golden Age, stuff like that. I'm building pyramids just to finish CS quests. I think CS quests are probably one of the most important things on a strong Coastal Liberty game. But, you know, we went Notre Dame first, really did not prioritize our uh, libraries whatsoever, and we are going to be getting unis, I think, on turn 80. Maybe 82 or 81? No, uh, 80, yeah, 82. 82 unis typically not very good right I, I i will not admit you know 82 unis is not something to very be proud of, like to be too proud of but in this case my science before unis is Hello? Oh my god, dude. I, I I swear to god, like I it's so it happens so frequently, like you'd think I'd learn, but I really just don't. Anyway, it's turn eighty. I'm at a hundred sci hundred fifty science before an NC. NC would add probably about like maybe twenty or twenty science or so. Um so call it like a hundred and eighty science ish by the time I get to unis. Before any unis are up. That's fucking crazy. I'm at three hundred thirty hand. 330 hammers on turn 80. That's insane. My build queues are coming down so fast. I'm building caravanaceries. Like that's how you know. This to me right here is is looking like a really good game. I just need to. Sh what I'm thinking is I just need to straight shot right to Explo four. As soon as I get Explo four, these cities are going to be crazy. My GPT is going to be insane. All right, so let's let's fast forward. When do we get factories? Um. We established that we felt pretty safe. Um, we are at, how much science are we at? 365 science with Explo 2, um, or sorry, with Explo 3. That's very good. Obviously, preschools. And we're at 400 pre four schools. So we get 96 factories, 96 facts, and we're one turning all of these decks. 
And this is going to be, the scientist should get me there. Or is it 105? 105 schools? Oh, no, 104. And then we get uh, uh, 104 schools. Actually, if I finish the new facts, yeah, well, it's 104. 104 schools. This is the crazy part. 104 schools, which is slow. Like, don't get me wrong, that's pretty slow. But I'm 450 science before before taking order, order science, or before having a school up. This is insane. I have 40 happiness because I have so many CS allies. I've built all of my infrastructure, including zoos and stuff. And this is the kind of thing that you, your, your games look like when you play order coastal with explo and like you're just playing wide your cities become insane right the explo gives you so many yields like compared to any other tree um it's just it's just incredible so your cities are so good on a per on a per city basis compared to something like liberty that or like a standard liberty piety game that's inland that you're able just to have such incredibly strong games so consistently by, by doing builds like this, um, right? Like I'm two turn. I, I think there's a one turn bank in an expand. Like what the fuck? Um, none of my factory builds were overturned, like seven turns. Like I think this city, um, six turned a factory, the city I put down on turn like 50. Right. So eventually, I mean, we're going to fast forward here. Eventually, um, I ended up winning World's Fair, which was really dumb that they passed in the first place. But um, we end up getting turn, what was it? When's the scientist? Oh, we get like turn 10, 123, I think labs it was, or 124 labs after Kremlin, which is quite fast. This would have been at least uh, probably around a 150 space timing just from the raw um, science value. And I ended up playing it out just to see what my science would be. Um, and I think we we ended up breaking 2,000, which is just obviously insane. But um, yeah, 2,000 science with incredible GPT, 700 GPT. Look at all these scientist spawns like just coming incredibly good game and this just comes from understanding early build cues not letting yourself fall into the trap that is not building roads and you know making sure you're building the proper infrastructure i built my um granary so late on my um in my cap right like all of these things kind of matter and um and, and it's the little things that I feel like people don't really um, think about when, when they're playing builds like this, but those are the ones that really can get you into, into trouble. So I wanted to highlight this game because the early sim is very, I, I, I it's very unique to playing these types of Liberty starts. Um, and I feel like it's, it's something that I've not seen 700 hammers. Uh, it's not something I've seen anyone really do in recent memory just because of the map changes and kind of Liberty coastal Liberty got, has gotten a bad rep over, over the, over the ages. So I haven't played it in a while, but I had this game and I wanted to share um, just because it, it came out so strong and, you know, coastal Liberty has the potential to, to be really good. So wanted to, you know, um, kind of highlight this and yeah, if you have any questions about the game, feel free to let me know. Um, and do not forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.